there, traders and investors. Bennett Tyndall with TradingAnalysis.com. It is Tuesday, March 9th, 2021, and this will be your weekly public market update. Uh, just a friendly reminder, as always, every Wednesday, 845 Eastern on Todd Gordon's YouTube channel. We have our TA Live Wednesday live stream show. Alex also has his crypto show every Thursday morning at 9 Eastern on our Trading Analysis YouTube channel. You can go to TradingAnalysis.com to check us out and as well as youtube.com forward slash trading analysis. So, hey, if you guys have been following my work on Twitter, uh, you'll remember that back on February 2nd, um, so let's get off of the daily chart. Let me drop you to a 195 minute chart. So going back to February 2nd of this year, uh, I put out a chart on Twitter after the uh, four and a half percent correction that we saw. You can see peak to trough about 4.56% in the S&P. And what ended up happening there is we had a, a, a pretty significant and sharp move to the downside. I put out a chart on Twitter and I said at the time, and this was on uh, February 2nd, so right about here. At the time, we had only seen a measured move correction. And I said, look, a three-wave move does not a trend make, or in this case, a three-wave move does not a trend break. That is breaking the upside move. So what I did was I identified a zone of upside resistance that had come into play um, right at about, let me go ahead and hide the smaller degree structures here. I had a zone of resistance between 3890 and 3920. That was my upside objective in the S&P prior to seeing a larger correction set in. You'll notice we saw a high of 39.50 in the S&P and have since printed about a 5.7% correction to the downside. Uh, just really quickly taking you back to that chart, this was uh, about 11.30 in the morning on the second. I said, yeah, we did sell off relatively uh, in, a, in a very sharp manner. However, it unfolded in a three-wave measure move. So at 38.37, we said, look, this market's likely going to see 38.90 to 39.20 prior to a larger correction setting in. And you'll notice we got up to the 39.20 um, on the 8th. So February 8th, we entered a short trade with our members looking for a move down to 3,800 uh, in the S&P. And our expiration on that trade was the 19th. We took the trade off, most of the trade off on the 5th. So we took profits already on our trade. And we're now faced with uh, two very distinct possibilities. Possibility number one is that this is actually a very large flat inside of a wave two position, which is going to be part of A of a larger three wave move to the downside. The count here um, is not out of the question. This is still a distinct possibility for the markets. Looking at the structure of this move being nearly another measured move to the downside here, we actually uh, broke south of equality of the secondary decline compared to the first one. However, we've seen a very sharp move back to the upside. Okay, And I would be inclined to simply favor this and dismiss the bearish possibilities, or I shouldn't say bearish possibilities, but the possibility that suggests there will be continued selling if it weren't for the damage done to the NASDAQ. We'll get to the damage done to the NASDAQ in just a minute, but let me take you to a 20 minute chart and give you some actionable takeaways uh, from this video. So. Here, I see the two distinct possibilities being this. Either number one, the correction has run its course and we just completed a five wave or a three wave move to the downside. You'll notice the low was about 37.23 versus the 37.70 equality level. And we're now five waves off the March 4th low in the S&P. If this is the case, and we are resuming the uptrend in the indexes, the optimal entry opportunity, the confirmed entry opportunity, if you would, is still yet to come. That will come in a retracement of this directional move. So if we can get a three wave move into support in the S&P, that will be my personal buy signal. One sign that I want to see happen before committing to the bullish side is I want to see the NASDAQ get north, close north on the cash session close over 12,850, uh, call it 12,9. Because if you take a look at the NASDAQ, we certainly do have the measured move bounce. Here it was spot on, unlike the S&P. But as it stands now, what we're looking at in the NASDAQ 
is the possibility that this is simply another three wave counter trend move prior to resuming the downtrend. We've got a well defined zone of resistance between 12.8 and 12.9 in the NASDAQ. You'll notice we're trading below the area of the previous fourth. So if we can move higher in five waves here, that will help confirm the count in the S&P that says the correction has run its course and it's time to get to work on the upside. But until we get 5.3 here and get north of 12.850 to 12.900 in the NASDAQ, I personally remain a bit cautious. That's it for me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. You can check us out at tradinganalysis.com. And as always, I'll see you guys next week. Same time, same place. Have a good one. Take care.